Hello guys, hope you're doing well and as always if you are new to my channel I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Okay, the problem at our hand today is that uh, we have a motor system and this motor is basically being placed on a metallic steel plate and is being hoisted by means of a, a crane. The, uh, the total uh, weight of this motor is basically 3500 pounds okay so this is our system and uh, this motor is being constrained at uh, different points one point is b the other is c and the third point is d and uh, if you look at it uh, uh, it is being lifted at this point a so if you look at it the fbd of this motor can be very simply being placed uh, at uh, this point and this point is actually the point a okay and and all our calculations will be taken from this point a remember all our calculations uh, will be taken from this point a and then from this point a we proceed to point b from this point a we proceed to point c and from this point we proceed to point d okay so if you look at it uh, this is actually uh, our point uh, a if you are uh, we can also just for uh, to clear your confusion we can write this point uh, very easily as the point a this is our point a okay so now uh, let's uh, try to so solve this problem by first considering the fbd okay so this is a and from a to b this is our uh, force ab okay then the other force from point A is this force AC which is nothing but here to here and the force at the back this is force AD which is starting from this point to this point okay and they have said that uh, D is equals to 4 feet uh, so this means that uh, this D actual length starts from this point to this point so it is 4 feet so very important point is when this D moves from this point to this point this C will also shift because it is being related to point D. So this uh, distance will increase from uh, this uh, point to this point. So we can technically say that our uh, C point will be on this over here, just at uh, the, the point uh, where Y is lying, Y axis is lying, okay. So because they have constrained this D as four feet very important point uh, so what first we'll start by first taking the coordinates the coordinates I remember our origin is lying at this point so this point the coordinates will be 0 0 0 the second point will be B and B coordinates are 4 minus 3 minus 10 how if you look at it if I go over here and I move along the x-axis from here to here it is 4 feet and then from this point I move towards point B in the negative y axis it is going to be minus 3 and from the origin this is positive z we go in the downward direction which is nothing but 10 units but since in negative y it is minus 10 the c coordinate is very unique c coordinate since the point c is shifted from this point to this uh, so it is basically uh, lying at a position x equal to z see this is the new c so that is why c is 0 what about uh, the point C on the y axis we can easily move this is our again from here we move a distance to this point this new C is 3 feet this is 3 feet Z will again be minus 10 what about uh, this D at the at the back again very important uh, point D is very critical uh, we have to be careful so if we move from this point at the back of the x axis negative x axis this is 4 feet so this is 4 feet but it's at the back of a positive x so it's negative x so it's minus 4 now what about uh, uh, the y the y if you look at it from this point to this point from this to this is 3 but again d is located from this point uh, 2 feet okay so in order to calculate this d we have to subtract uh, 3 feet from 3 feet you have to subtract 2 feet so we will end up with 1 feet so that is the relation uh, is 1 feet along the y axis z will same again minus 10 now transform these uh, coordinates and we will try to calculate uh, the position vector 
uh, at uh, force AB, force AC and force AD. So position vector force AB will be uh, B coordinates minus the A coordinates 4i minus 3j minus 10k. Force AC will be the C coordinates minus the A coordinates 0i plus 3j minus 10k. And force AD will be D coordinates minus the A coordinates. It will be minus 4i plus 1j minus 10k. Okay, so this is uh, how we calculate the position vector. Now we need to calculate uh, on this force AB the unit vector. The unit vector is going to be the magnitude of force B and the direction will be taken a, this as a unit vector, which is lying on the force AB will also lie on the force AC and lie on the force AD. So the magnitude vector FAB will be uh, magnitude FAB and uh, direction. So direction will be 4i minus 3j minus 10k and the vector will be divided by uh, uh, under square root of 4 the whole square, 3 the whole, whole square and 10 the whole square. You will end up with the resultant direction uh, vector will be 11.18. Okay. So you simplify this equation, you will get up with force AB equals to magnitude FAB into 0.3578i minus 0.268j and minus 0.894k. Then we calculate force AC. The force AC uh, position vector is this and you divide it by the, uh, the, the squared uh, of these values, the square root of these values which will be 0 whole square plus 3 square and plus 10 square. So it will be uh, taking the square root of these values will end up with 10.44. So we will write it as 4ac magnitude and simplify this uh, ratio. We will get 0i plus 0.287j minus 0.957k. Then we calculate force AD. This is our position vector. And then we take the, uh, the, the square root of the squared of these values, which is nothing but 10.81. And uh, we simplify this ratio. We get force AD magnitude into minus 0.37i plus 0.0925j minus 0.93k. Now uh, we have another force which is this one and this is 3500k. Now we know the condition of equilibrium. This system must be uh, uh, in equilibrium. So the condition of equilibrium is summation of all forces equal to zero. So we can write this as equation form as FAB, FAC, FAD and F must all be equal to zero because six summation of forces must be equal to zero. Now we will collect the i, the j and k components from equation 1, from equation 2, from equation 3 and 4. So we do it, the first value is going to be force AB into 0.3578i, the second value will be force AC into 0, the third value will be uh, force AD into 0.37i but with a negative sign. Now if we calculate all the j's, the j's value is minus 0.268 j the other value is uh, plus 0.278 for 4 ac and the third value is force ad minus 0.37 and this is force uh, uh, force ac and this is force ad uh, which is basically uh, 0.0925 j uh, which is this one and now to collect the k values minus 0.894 which is uh, the k value over here uh, then the second value for force AC is minus 0.957k, which is this one. The third value for force AD will be this one, which is minus 0.925k. And then there is one force, uh, for, uh, uh, force F, which is 3500k, and uh, we have placed it over here. Now, since uh, we have uh, collected all the i, j and k components, we can calculate uh, and take out three equations out of it because this value plus this value plus this value could be equal to, equal to 0 and here it is 0.3578 FAB uh, which is this one i and minus force AD 0.37 i. Again, uh, again these are all the values of we have taken from the i, this must be equal to 0. So this is equation A. The same we take out the values. Uh, for the j, in, make it an equation, minus force AB, uh, 0.268 and then uh, force AC, 0.287j and then force AD, 
which is 0 0.02 0 0.925 80. So this becomes our second equation and now we are interested in our third equation for the case. So the third equations will be minus 4 AB 0.894 the, and the other component will be minus 4 AC into point, uh, minus 0 0.957 and the third component of this will be minus uh, 0.925 force AD and then there is one thing remaining in the K is 3500 we put it there. So we can equate all this uh, we can say this is our third equation which is in terms of K's this is J's and this is I's. So we have three thermal equations and these three equations could be solved simultaneously so we will get uh, you can put them in your calculator and directly get your answers as force AB is 1.47 kilopons, force AC 0.914 kilopons, and force AD is 1.42 kilopons. So this was a, a three-dimensional problem for a kilogram of particle. I hope you have understood this problem. All the calculations are step by step shown to you. Uh, I thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.